Roberto, it's Kathleen. Oh, Kathleen, how are you doing, my friend? I'm good. How about yourself? So far, so good. Talk to me, Kathleen. The Biden clip. I can't tell you how many comments I read on Facebook saying this wasn't racist and you're taking it out of context and just a myriad of things. And it, it kind of reminded me, I was out to lunch with a friend of mine and I was talking about my experience as a big sister, which I was a number of years ago to a young girl who was, I believe she was 10 at the time. And the first question out of his mouth was, was she black? I wonder why. And Explain to I, me what that meant to you. After I got over being stunned by his question, I said, why would you ask that? And apparently I, I looked upset and because he said, well, I don't know why you're getting so upset. And I said, because I want to know why you would ask that question. And he said, well, I just thought, you know, she was poor, right? Wow. And I said, you do understand that percentage-wise, there's more poor white kids than there are poor black kids, right? So that percentage-wise, there's a greater possibility that she was white than there is that she was black. And I said, you're assuming a poor child would be black. But for the record, she was a white child. I did tell him, no, sh she was white, and her mother worked full-time, and she had four brothers and sisters, and her father left, and the mother was trying to make ends meet and was struggling. And she needed the attention that her mom couldn't give her because her mom was working a 40-hour-a-week job, and, you know, after school, she didn't have any activities to participate in because her mother couldn't afford them. So she and I would spend five afternoons a week together, and, you know, I bought her a new pair of sneakers once because she her sneakers were really beat up. And But most of the time, I just I let her talk, and I listened, and I helped her with homework. And, you know, you don't you need to use the N-word right. to be a racist. You know, that that's blatant racism, but there's a lot of subtle racism that does exist every day among people that we don't think of as hateful, nasty people. But it, it I mean, that, you know, let me tell you something. That story that you just gave there, that is the story, Kathleen, because that is a comparable story that we need to qualify what we're saying here. I mean, it's it, uh, it's amazing. You You come up with some of these stories that better than trying to just elaborate on the issue, tells it in real time. As soon as I, I saw that Biden clip, I said, oh my gosh, I've been there. And it was just as racist when my friend said it as it was when Biden said it. And maybe, maybe as you said, it was a Freudian, Freudian flip. I think you're being generous. Let me tell you why I take this position. Not everybody's like you, Kathleen, first of all. And not everybody understands what racism really looks like what it feels like because they've been programmed that way i mean your story thing still rings so true you what you gave a story about uh your dad when you called in once before and i mean that that was one of the most touching stories and it it, it left an indelible impression on you the thing about it is not mm -hmm. very many Americans have gone, I mean, I'm talking white Americans now, not many of them have gone through that experience that you've had. So I am cognizant of that. And not only cognizant of that, I work within that framework because I think I can be more effective working there because, again, somebody like you have gone through that transition, but a lot of folks haven't yet. So the transition is a bit different.